All right, here we go with this next one where we're handling some uh, decimals. So let's make sure to handle this with grace bit by bit. First off, we know that we're evaluating an expression and we just need to replace n here and the n over here with four. So let's just begin right there. n is four, so we have 0 0.5 multiplied by n squared and the n is four. Then we have minus 2.8 multiplied by n, again, which is four. And then we add 1.2. So now that we're here, next up, we'll go ahead and perform this exponent four squared, which gives us 16. And so we have 0 0.5 multiplied by 16 minus 2.8 times four. Let's figure out what that is real quick. 2.8 times four. So eight times four gives us 32, carry the three. Two times four gives us eight, carry the three is 11. Then we bring one decimal place back right here at the end. So we end up having 11.2. Next up, we have plus 1.2 right over here. And now let's take care of this. 0 0.5 multiplied by 16 is the same as saying half of 16. Everyone help me out. What is half of 16? Yeah, half of 16 is just gonna be eight. So this is where, again, knowing what decimals mean can save you a little bit of time. So then we have eight minus 11.2 plus 1.2. So you have every, every right to go ahead and do eight minus 11.2, which would be negative 3.2. And then with negative 3.2, you add the 1.2 and that gives you negative two. However, we can go ahead and actually save ourselves a little bit of a headache by focusing right over here. If we focus right over here a little bit, we notice that we can take this 11.2 and in our heads, we can make it look like this. Eight minus, let me just write this with a red. So minus 11, or excuse me, minus 10, minus 1.2. Watch, because I did that everyone, Look at what I can see cancels out right away. And that gives me a smooth eight minus 10, which is negative two, boom, right away. Again, instead of dealing with decimal here, then decimal there, just cancel what I know can cancel and then leave the rest there. And that means that our correct answer here is answer choice D, negative two. But again, whichever way you went after it still works but I'm always looking for ways to save and cut time. All right, so in this next question here, we're gonna begin by reading that question sentence. And it says, if this many muffins were made, again, that's just conditional information. We really wanna focus right here where it says, what is the difference between donuts and muffins? All right, everybody, just very quickly, the word difference means to do what? What operation? Right, that means to subtract. Again, taking the difference, we're seeing the gap. So with that, again, write that goal down. We want the difference between donuts and muffins. So there are gonna be two ways that we can take care of this. And the first way is gonna be very raw and straightforward. The first way is gonna be like this. If we have 35 muffins, so 35 muffins, then we want to know what the difference is. So blank is the difference. And the difference means subtract. So we would do donuts minus muffins. Okay. So when we write the other ratio down that we see here, we're going to see that it says a bakery makes muffins to donuts in a ratio of 10 to 22. Okay. Sounds good. So we have muffins to donuts, muffins being first, we have 10 to 22. So when we tackle this, we're gonna write down 10 muffins. And then we gotta be careful here because if we were to write 22 in here, we have to understand that this 22 represents donuts. We know that if we did that, it wouldn't match up with up here. This here represents the difference between donuts and muffins. This represents just donuts. So that's a problem. So if we were to go like this, we would have to calculate 
And then at the end, at the end, we would take whatever number we get and subtract it from the muffins to get the actual difference. But we can skip all of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can skip all of that. We actually don't really need to do all that hoo-ha. All we need to do is compare the same things in the same way. That's all we have to do. Everybody, we said it already, but I want you to say it again. To get the difference, we do what operation? To take the difference, we're going to be subtracting. That's right. So if, everybody, the ratio that we're given is 10 muffins to 22 donuts, how do we get the difference? We're going to subtract. Everyone, the difference is going to be what? 22 minus 10 gives us 12. And so 12 right here, that's the difference in this ratio. Guess how we can use that? Right over here. 12 is the difference. If we use it like this, look at how fast we can solve this. I'll put X for the missing value, the answer that I'm looking for, and here we go. We'll do 35 over 10, X over 12, we have right here. And then X over 12 right there. So when we take a look at this, you might think that, hey, we can try to use convenient numbers first, but it's not very easy to go between 10 and 12 or 35 and 10. So we might be thinking that we just have to cross multiply and divide. But there's one more thing you can try. And that's going to be simplifying before you multiply. Everyone, when we take a look at 35 and 10, what's a number that can be divided into both 35 and 10? What's a number that can be divided into both 35 and 10? Yeah, five. So when we do that, when we divide the five out, check this out, it becomes a little easier. Divide by five, divide by five. So that's gonna give us 35 divided by five is seven. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we have 7 over 2 equals x over 12. And this is going to help us get the right answer right now. We can go ahead, cross multiply, and divide. Or we can just simply see from right here that from 2 to 12, that's times 6. So 7 to the answer is times 6. Everybody, what's 7 multiplied by 6? Yeah, 7 times 6, that's going to give us 42. And that's going to be the correct answer. That'll be answer choice D. All right, next question here, my party people. So we're going to go ahead and begin by writing this down, saying that we have 12 equals 5x minus 3. So remember, when we're tackling equations... The goal, simply put, is to get the x by itself. That's the goal. Just get it by itself. So we observe what operations we see moving forward. So that way we can work backwards. One more time. If I'm looking forward, I see that I would multiply by 5, then subtract by 3. So again, the last step with PEMDAS is the first step for an equation. The last step was minus 3. My first step is adding 3 to both sides. Once I do that, cancels out, 15 is 12 plus three, and then we still have that five X left over. And then remember, we're not done until we have X by itself. So we have five times X, that's the operation that we're currently observing. And so to get rid of that, we'll divide by five on both sides, nice and easy, right there and there. And that's gonna cancel out, leaving us with X equals 15 divided by 5, and that is 3. And there we are. There's our correct answer, x equals 3. That is answer choice D, nice and easy. And if we wanted to confirm, we could go ahead and plug in each of these answers for x and see if the left and the right sides match up. But there we go. On to the next one.